Lee, an open carry Texas member, was walking, getting exercise, and carrying an AR-15 on his back. He was stopped by a constable. In Brazoria County. In Brazoria County, and told that he could not have his weapon loaded as he walked. And then another officer told him that he had to identify himself and that they could ask at any time for no reason. Okay, well, if he was opening carrying a rifle, there is nowhere in state law that says it has to be unloaded. Nowhere in the freaking code whatsoever. And plus, if he was just walking with his AR-15 slung in the back, you know, safely, then what supposed crime had he committed? So first of all, the stop was complete and other nonsense because he wasn't doing anything right. He wasn't pointing at people. He wasn't disturbing the peace, whatever. No, he was just minding his own business, walking, getting some exercise, and just chose to carry a necessary tool to defend himself should he be attacked. I mean, why should he have gotten stopped in the first place? And plus, okay, if you have to identify yourself just because you're doing something lawfully, then why? It's the... Like in the in the penal code, it says that you can only identify yourself if you are arrested for something that is for something that you have already been arrested for. And even then, it has to be a lawful arrest, and that's only when you have to identify yourself. So if you're just being detained, you don't have to you don't have to give them anything. You can't lie to them, but you could just say, "No, I'm not going to provide my identification for you because I don't have to." I mean, it's. The whole stop was complete and other nonsense. I mean, it's the logic behind there is non-existent. You want me to say something? Well, it's really simple as this. Uh, I'm going to read yeah. the law about failure to identify to you. This is Texas Penal Code, subsection 38.02, failure to identify. A person commits an offense if he intentionally refuses to give his name, residence address, or date of birth to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person and requested the information. That is the only time that you have to identify yourself to a law enforcement officer if you have already been arrested for something else and furthermore, lawfully. Some trumped up crap that they made up, that does not count either. If you have been arrested, but it's not a legitimate arrest, you still legally do not have to identify yourself. It's probably a good idea to go ahead and do so. Um, I'm not, and I'll tell you that flat out. But that's, that is the law. If you have been lawfully arrested and the officer requests the information, then you are legally required to give it to him. If you have been uh, detained, or if the police officer uses the old, you're a witness to a crime excuse, you can't lie to him about who you are, but you still don't have to provide your information to him. You do not have to tell him who you are. You do not have to tell him where you live. You don't have to tell him how old you are. You don't have to tell him anything. It's very simple. A person commits an offense if he intentionally gives a false or fictitious name, residence, address, or date of birth, to a peace officer who has lawfully arrested the person, lawfully detained the person, or requested the information from a person that he thinks was a witness to a crime. So in plain English, if you're under arrest and the arrest is legit and you know it, you have to identify yourself. If you're not under arrest, you don't have to identify yourself. If you're being detained, lawfully, unlawfully, whatever, you don't have to identify yourself. If the police officer thinks you are a witness to a crime, you don't have to identify yourself. The only time that you must identify yourself is if you are already under arrest for something else and it's legit. You cannot be arrested for failure to identify. It is a legal impossibility in the state of Texas. That is the way it works for me, him, the governor, and every police officer in the state. That's just, that's it, fellas. And if you don't like it, you have to do what we have to do. Go to Austin, get them to change it. That's all there is, there ain't no. What else? Um, <laughs> I'll address one other thing while we're here that, uh, state law that says your rifle has to be unloaded that didn't really exist. There's no easy way to say this, so I'm just gonna say it. There are a lot of police officers out there who don't have a clue as to what most laws really are. The way that they operate is basically off of tradition. 
and that's what it comes down to. Uh, their sergeant, uh, their instructor their, at their, the academy, or their or, policy, or whatever. Right. So, some somewhere someone told them this is the law. But the truth of the matter is that doesn't make any difference at all. Have you ever heard ignorance of the law is no excuse? The police, the police will use that on you. It applies to them as well. So if they come at you and tell you something is legal or illegal and you know that they're wrong, stand your ground. Don't back up. Don't back off. Don't give in. That's the way that it works. And if they go ahead and take you to jail anyway, you got them. Remember that. Anyway, uh, that's, that's the way that is. Uh, and here's something else. San Antonio has a city ordinance that says that if you're carrying a weapon around, it has to be a rifle. It has to be unloaded. That law, it's on the books in San Antonio and it legally, it doesn't even exist. There's this thing called state preemption. And what that means is, what, what state preemption means is, whatever the state law is, the local governments, city and county, they can't change it. They can't get more restrictive, they can't get less restrictive. Whatever state law is applies to all the cities and they can't, they can't make a different law. Period. That's what preemption means. So, in that particular case, San Antonio has something on the books. It, it's written down on a piece of paper, but legally, it's not written down on a piece of paper. It doesn't exist legally. So, if you come across something like that, you're in Podunk, Texas, and the sheriff comes out and says, well, I'm the law around here, and around here, you can't have that thing loaded. Oh, yes, you can. And if he pushes the issue, you're going to have to take it out of state court. You're going to have to take it to the federal level, but you will win. And if you can afford to do that, that's exactly what I recommend you do because that's the only way to make some of these guys change. There are some very good ones. There are also some very bad ones. And if we're going to do anything about it, we're going to have to push the issue. I mean, I mean even the local government code, it says, you know, a municipality cannot, you know, adopt any law that is, like you said, more restricted or less restricted than state law. Just right. it's preemption. Just and you already described that. The problem is there's no there's no automatic punishment that makes them not want to behave that way. That's the problem. There there is. Have you heard about this uh, this uh, bill going through that would levy fine? What is it, Miguel? It's a uh, ten thousand dollar fine. It's, for, it's a thousand for the first offense, and then ten thousand for every subsequent. But it. But what is it for exactly? It's it's for if they put up an improper if thirty out six sign. Oh no! It's yeah. it's for uh, government. It's for local governments, it, state, county, or city governments that try to prohibit you from carrying a lawful weapon into their into their establishment. In their um, so the county clerk's office, if they put up a sign that says you can't bring your concealed handgun in here. They, that office can be fined $1,000. And then the next is 10000 10000 Okay. There is nothing like that that says, if you're a police officer and you tell somebody something's against the law and it's not, you will pay this fine. You will go to jail for three days or something to that effect. If there were something along those lines that what said, happened? city councilman who passed a law that goes against state preemption, get in trouble. Police officers that break the law claim a law exists when it doesn't. Things like that. You get in trouble. That would be a preventive measure. It would be something that would make them think twice before they got out of line. As of now, they can claim anything they want. They can tell you anything they want, and there's there's no punishment for them. You have to go to court and sue them, which usually works if you have the time and if you have the money. The average working man doesn't have the money, and he can't take off that much time from work. They use that against you. That's some of the leverage that they use. So. Um, until we get something like that, the only recourse we have is to fight. You're going to have to file a suit, you're going to have to get a lawyer, and you're going to have to push the issue. If you can do that, in the end, you'll win. That's the choice you have to make. Yeah, it's time and money. It's the problem. Well, that's what they use against you. But anyway, all right, that's that. Okay.